Hello, I'm Atsubo George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Oh, I'm so blessed. Listen, I love the Lord, and you should love him too. Praise God. The best thing the Holy Spirit does in your life is to bring you to truth. Whatever manifestation he does, whatever um, dreams, whatever experience that you see, the most important thing is that he guides you into all truth. That's the best thing he does for you. And if he's not doing that in your life, something is really wrong. Praise God. Yeah, that's his assignment. Jesus said he will guide you into all truth. And that's how you know that you belong to him. Jesus said, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. And then he says, the father prunes us. And how does the father prune us? He said in verse 3, John chapter 15, he says, you are pruned through the words that I have spoken to you. So there is a constant speaking of his words to you. Jesus said, God said it and Jesus repeated it. Man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. The only way you know you're living today is if you're still hearing the voice of God coming to you. That's how you know you are alive. If that is not happening, I'm sorry to tell you, you are in the region of the dead. Yep. I have a lot to share with you today, but before we go on, can we make demand for our daily bread are you ready say with me father i demand right now my daily bread now i receive it from you in jesus name amen praise god thank you lord jesus oh glory we're still talking about this covenant and I told you there are two covenants God made with Abraham. We, we've just been actually talking about one. I've touched on the circumcision, but we've been dwelling on the covenant of tithing. We've not even exhausted it. You see, there are many things that even the church does not even understand today. And because we don't understand it, we are not living by those same principles. And some things we do, we don't even understand the depth or why we do them. But that's why the Holy Spirit has been given to us. His job is to take you into the depths of truth. But then we must be careful how to, you know, how easily people eliminate things. Oh, please stop it, stop it. You see, when it comes to doctrine, we must be careful that we learn from the Holy Spirit. He's the teacher. We don't build doctrines by studying the Bible alone. Because there are a lot of things that it will take the Holy Spirit to explain them to you. If you have not received from the Holy Spirit consigning that subject, you, are no, you have no authority to share on them. Because you're only telling us what you were told. You know, let's maintain what we were told. So the people that told you, where did they get it from? Um, they must have gotten it from, from some divine source. Uh-uh. Whatever source there is, the Holy Spirit is there today. We can go to him and say, Lord, what, what, what do you say about this subject? And he will speak. Yes, he would speak. That's the discipline we must form as God's children before we accept anything and uh, call it doctrine. Praise God. So, God spoke to Abraham and cut this covenant with Abraham. I, I, was, I was going there last week. And thank, thank, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Praise God. All right. So I began to share some things with you last week, and I'm going to go right into it. Praise <laughs> God. Talking about his covenants. You know, we read the early church. There was something they were doing. And 
It's amazing how we have shifted our attention from that. I'll tell you something. The Lord was talking to me and says, this is the reason you don't have real believers in Jesus Christ today. This is the reason you still have people who are in Christ, but living as though they are not in Christ. They are only in Christ with their mouths, but their hearts are not with Him. The Lord was showing me. Now, I've never, please believe me when I tell you this, I've never seen it clearly in this light until we began this series and the Lord began to open my eyes to it. See, as a teacher of God's word, I know that whenever the Lord says, teach on this thing, don't act like you know it. Because he that is telling you teach on this thing, he's also telling you, I want to teach on this thing. For him to want to teach on it, then there must be something he wants to point out to you. And remember, his words are for edification. His edification, his words are for teaching. They are for correction. And then they are for comfort. So we might be doing something wrong for, his, for so long with all sincerity in our hearts. Yeah. You remember Abimelech when he took Abraham's wife, Sarah, because they had mentioned that she was his sister. And so Abimelech took her. And God showed, showed up in his bedroom and said, you, you're a dead man if you don't return this man. And he, he said, how about Lord? The man told me she was his sister. And please, I did this from the sincerity of my heart. And guess what the Lord said? He said, yes, I know you did it with the sincerity of your heart. That's why I did not destroy you. So he knows when you're making an honest mistake. He knows. He doesn't just judge you by your actions. He judges the heart. Yes, he judges the heart. So there are lots of things we're doing wrong in the church. And what does God do when the time comes? You see, just like you said, in the days of ignorance, he winked at it. He, he just overlooked it. But then he still calls us into truth. And that's the job of the Holy Spirit. So we might be doing something, thinking we're doing the right thing. Then the Holy Spirit comes and says, hey, this is the right way or this is the truth concerning this thing that you have been doing. Okay, so we, 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 we read in, about the early church from Acts chapter 2. I think I should, let's, let's just go into this now. Praise God. Acts chapter 2. I call this Kabar Nakad. Now, this was when the church started. This was the day of Pentecost. And Peter began to preach to this multitude. And I call this Kabarnia. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Verse, let me start from verse 40. Acts chapter 2 now. You remember, that's the day of Pentecost. And with, verse 40, and with many other words, he testified and exalted them, saying, be saved from this present generation. Take note of his word. Be saved from this perverse, sorry. Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his words were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' Doctrine, follow this now. The people who got saved continued steadfastly in what? In the apostles' doctrine <clears throat> and fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayers. Now, those were not the two doctrines of the apostles alone. Follow, follow this. It says they continued in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. In breaking of bread, take note, he didn't say uh, um, um, semicolon. No, he says, they, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, comma, in the breaking of bread and in prayer. So the apostles were breaking bread, okay? Then 
the apostles were prayer people. Then there were other things that they called the apostles' doctrine. Now follow this and watch. Now verse 40, 43. Then fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common. Look at verse 45. And sold their possessions and goods and divided them amongst all as anyone had need. Take note of this. Now this is recorded on the first day of the church. This is recorded on the first day of the church. That what? The apostles had doctrines. The apostles broke bread. The apostles prayed. And it says the people who believe continued to do those same things with the apostles. And then he said something here. He says, verse 44, Now all who believed were together and had all things in common. Mm. And sold all who believed, all who believed, sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need this is deep this is strong we don't preach this today not because the truth is we don't know it we don't know this doctrine it was the way the church started this is why they had so many miracles. This is why their hearts were, the, the, the heart of the disciples were one. This is why they were single-minded. The Bible said they sold their possessions and gave out. They gave to those in need. Now that's how it's phrased there. Now let me show you something in chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 32. Now the church had begun to progress. I want you to follow this now. It says, verse 32, chapter 4, book of Acts. Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possesses was his own, but they had all things in common. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And great grace was upon them all. Follow this now. Nor was there anyone among them who lacked. Mm. Now follow. None among them lacked. Then can you imagine now here, there is what? Semicolon. Meaning, why didn't they lack? This is the reason they didn't lack. For all who... I had that by. He didn't say for some. For all, not some. The reason nobody lacked, follow. For all who were possessors of lands and houses sold them and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold and laid them at the apostles' feet. And they distributed to each as anyone had need. The same thing he said in chapter 2. Yeah. They believed the gospel of Jesus Christ. They had lands. They had possession of, obviously, they had these things before they believed in Jesus. Why were they selling them and bringing them to the apostles? Did they misunderstand Jesus? You remember Jesus met the rich young ruler and told him, go sell everything you have. And the Bible said that fellow had loved the Lord from his youth. He had kept the commandment. He testified. He had kept the commandment of God from his youth. Yet Jesus said, go sell everything you have. Give to the poor and come and follow me. Does Jesus 
have a challenge with rich people. Now, the Bible didn't even tell us that it was rich people that were doing this one here. It says all of them, all of them who had possessions of lands and houses. Now, in chapter 2, it just said those who had possessions went to sell them. And they distributed the money to those in need. Now, notice they didn't distribute, the, they didn't just bring the money to church so that they can use to build the church. No. The reason they were selling this, exactly what Jesus said to that rich young ruler. He said, go sell it and give to the poor. The reason they were bringing it to the apostles is so that the apostles will do, take, do distribution to those in need. So nobody in the church, nobody among them was in need. Why? Anyone who had a challenge comes to church. Now, it didn't mean that the church was a need-based um, charity organization. I want you to follow carefully. Now, if, if you read, if you read down here, it says, Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Verse 36. It says, And Joseph, who was also named Barnabas by the apostles, which is translated son of encouragement, a Levite of the country of Cyprus, Cyrus, Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. What's going on? These folks were doing exactly what Jesus said to them. What did Jesus say to them? Let's go. Luke chapter 12. Marco Sacre de Dej Kubaria. Book of Luke. Shalabarum Zevre de Gedea. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'll read now. You can read, we can read from verse 22. It's, it's a long one. But I'll just I'll just keep to um Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hey, it's difficult. Let me just read from verse. Mm -hmm. Let me read from verse 29. But you can actually read from verse 22. Or read, read, read the whole chapter. Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. Praise God. Well, you don't have to read the whole chapter. Just this part of reading. Maybe you start from verse 22. But I'm going to start from verse 29. And do not seek what you should eat or what you should drink, nor have an anxious mind. For all these things the nations of the world seek after. Please take note. All these things the nations, when he says the nations, it's the people of the world seek after. What? What they will eat, what they will wear. He says, don't seek it. Because the nations of the world seek these things. Okay? And your father knows that you need these things. So he's not saying those things, having those things are wrong. He's saying, don't seek them because your father knows. Now, watch this now. But seek the kingdom of God. Instead of seeking those things, he says, seek the kingdom of God. And what's going to happen? And all these things shall be added to you. Look at the next one. Do not fear, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Now, look at what Jesus said. Immediately, he said this. Sell what you have. And give it as arms. Sell what you. This is Jesus instructing them now. Sell what you have and give arms. Provide yourselves money bags which do not grow old. A treasure in the heaven that does not fail. Where no thief approaches. Nor moats destroy. For where your treasure is. There your heart will be also. Who made this statement? Jesus. He gave an instruction. He says, sell what you have and give it as arms. Why? Hmm. He is dealing with people who have great, who, who have possessed things, who have gotten possession of things, different things. And Jesus comes and says, and I've explained to you that this teaching was, he gave this teaching because of the Abrahamic covenant. Okay? Yeah. Jesus taught this because of the Abrahamic covenant of tithing. And I told you, tithing is what brings God to the place where he takes care of you. 
That's what Melchizedek, when he met Abraham to cut that covenant, he brought bread and wine. It is the bringing of that bread and wine that produced this teaching and instruction Jesus is giving. So we are under the Abrahamic covenant. Please understand what I'm sharing with you. That covenant was never changed, has never been changed. No. And the Bible said the law, it's Moses' law. It's not the covenant God had with Abraham. Please understand. Now, based on that covenant, Jesus made, did this teaching. And then he gave an instruction. He said, go sell everything you have and give out. He told that rich young girl, direct this, go sell everything you have and give to the poor and come and follow me. You remember he had told that guy, he says, you're not far from the kingdom. Remember he told him. He, he, no, he had told him, he says, no, no. He says, okay, I'm, I'm, he's the scribe that he told you are not far from the kingdom. He told this guy, actually, when, when the guy said, all these things I have kept from my youth. And Jesus looked at him and loved him. Yeah, that's what I want to say. He looked at him and loved him. And then he said to him next, go sell everything. You, have. you lack one thing. Go sell everything you have, give to the poor and come and follow me. That's all Jesus said to him. And when the disciples had inquired of Jesus, why he told him, Jesus said, hey, there is no one who leaves father and mother who will not reap in this life a hundredfold and a life to come. So Jesus testified that there is the life to come. So Jesus wasn't making that guy broke. He was introducing that guy to the truth, to the real thing. So the disciples had this understanding our time is up praise <laughs> God oh thank you precious Lord Jesus I pray Lord you fill our hearts with your truth and bring us understanding in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen I'm going to continue from here tomorrow God bless you bye